Hello, this is Phil Heisel, Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Blacksburg, here today to provide you with an overview of our website, www.weather.gov slash Blacksburg. When you type that address into your browser, this is the website that will appear. At the top, you'll see eight options, Home, Forecast, Past Weather, Weather Safety, Information Center, News, Search, and About. Those eight options provide national information and most times are not relevant to your needs. The information you are probably most interested in is local weather information that can be found under NWS Forecast Office, Blacksburg, Virginia. Let's start with the first drop-down menu, Current Hazards. The first selection from the Current Hazards drop-down menu is the Hazardous Weather Outlook. This is an outlook that allows you to see what we are expecting in terms of significant weather events over the next seven days. This product is issued at least once a day from the National Weather Service in Blacksburg, and it should be checked from uh, key decision makers and emergency managers at least once a day. Back to our current hazards drop-down menu, you will see options for winter, drought, fire weather, space weather, river flooding, as well as thunderstorms and hurricanes. All of these are tied to this option, the briefing page. So let's select the briefing page that takes you to this link that shows seven tabs. And let's start with the first tab, the severe weather tab. This shows you the watches, warnings, and advisories in effect. And as we scroll down, you will also be able to see the uh, severe weather outlook posted from the Storm Prediction Center for days one, two, and three, as well as the four to eight day severe weather outlook. Current watches and mesoscale discussions that are text products and graphical products generated from the Storm Prediction Center typically prior to the issuance of a watch. So all of that can be found from the severe weather tab. Let's now go to the Winter Weather tab. When the National Weather Service in Blacksburg has advisories, watches, or warnings in effect, we will produce locally uh, produced graphics showing the amount of snow and ice expected in the area. When there are no headlines in effect like today, you still will be able to see the snowfall probabilities from the Weather Prediction Center for snow greater than or equal to 4 inches for days 1, 2, and 3. In addition, you can view the probability for ice accumulations equal to or greater than a quarter of an inch. A powerful tool that's found at the bottom of this winter weather tab is the 24 and 48 hour probabilistic snowfall accumulation forecast for days 1 through 3. This is also from the Weather Prediction Center, but it can help you plan and anticipate a worst case scenario of how much snow or ice is forecast over the next three days. So in this example, you can see we are showing the probability of snow falling for a 24-hour period uh, ending, and we'll change this to 8 p.m. on Friday, May 9th. So we've selected here one inch, and we've selected from this option 8 p.m. On, on Friday night. So this is the probability of one inch or more of snow falling uh, for this 24-hour period. And as you can see from this map, uh, let's zoom in on this area in Wyoming and Montana, where we see some blue indicating that there's greater than a 70% chance of one inch of snow falling for Friday in this area um, north of Yellowstone National Park in southwest Montana. If you're interested in a worst case scenario, I would suggest clicking on the accumulation by percentile option and then looking at the 90th percentile, which means that there is a 90% chance that this amount of snow or less will occur, and there's only a 10% chance that more than this amount of snow will occur. So you can see from the worst case scenario, and let's click on the accumulation contours, again, going back to our region of interest in Wyoming and Montana, that the worst case scenario shows four inches, four to six inches of snow uh, falling in this region. Again, this means that there is a 90% chance that less than four to six inches of snow will fall and only a 10% chance that more than four to six inches of snow will fall. So you can get a good worst case scenario from that option. So those are just a couple of uh, tools that you can use from the winter weather drop down menu. Let's now go to the flooding tab from the briefing page. The flooding tab, as you scroll down past the map, will provide rainfall outlooks from the Weather Prediction Center, including a map indicating where areas of excessive rainfall that could lead to flooding are expected. Rainfall forecast for days 1, 2, and 3, as well as hourly precipitation analysis, river forecast conditions, and long-term river forecast. 
These products will be discussed in more detail later in this presentation. The Fire Weather tab allows you to see the fire weather forecast that is created by our office by county. Just select on a specific county. In this example, we'll select Pulaski County, and you'll see the fire weather forecast uh, for that county. Again, more information about the fire weather forecast will be found, uh, excuse me, will be talked about later in this video. Going back to the briefing page, we also have a heat and drought tab. That shows you the seasonal drought outlook as well as the Palmer drought assessment and crop moisture assessment indicating whether or not the soil moisture is below normal, near normal, or above normal. We also have a space weather tab that will provide information uh, with regard to space weather. It takes you to the Space Weather Prediction Centers page to show you uh, if there are any uh, geomagnetic storms expected. You can also sign up through the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center to have alerts delivered to your uh, cell phone or email if any uh, alerts for geomagnetic storms uh, are uh, issued. And you can do that by going to the subscribe page uh, here. And finally, we have a current event page that is only updated when we uh, have winter headlines in effect, such as watches, warnings, and advisories. Locally produced maps will be posted here. So that is an overview of the current outlook as well as the briefing page from the National Weather Service in Blacksburg. Going back to our current hazards, there are a couple more options I want to share with you. Uh, the first is the Watches and Warnings tab. This is a page that is under development, but this will provide a summary of tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, and flash flood warnings in effect to the right. They also will appear graphically on this image on the left. These local links, we will talk about more later in this video. Regional links were found from the briefing page tab we talked about uh, earlier. Back to our website under the current hazards tab or drop down menu. You can display local storm reports as they come into the National Weather Service, or you can look at past events. So let's say you are interested in looking at all severe weather events from a specific date. Uh, you just would select our office, which is where this link will default, and we want to look at all events, and we scroll down here to the bottom and change the date and time. So let's say we're interested in looking at events from June 29th, 2012 through June 30th, 2012. And we select the Go button. And all the reports of damage, tornadoes, hail, and wind, and flooding will be plotted on the page. And you can go back and look at the uh, specific reports, the location, and the event that occurred. So if you need to look at a past weather event, uh, that may be uh, a tool to use to find that information. So that provides a short overview of the current hazards drop-down menu. Let's now move to the second drop-down menu, which is current conditions. Current conditions, the first option is observations. And this is just a text product that shows weather observations across various locations in our forecast area. Or you can look at hourly weather data. So let's say we want to look at uh, just some regional hourly weather data in uh, Virginia. It's broken down into northern Virginia, central and south central Virginia, southeast Virginia, west central and southwest Virginia, etc. So you can see temperature, humidity, uh, dew point, and winds uh, for um, that area. Back to our website under the current conditions, you will also notice there's an option to look at rainfall. This will take you to a map where you can display precipitation, and this precipitation is gathered from rain gauges and from radar estimates, and you can look at that precipitation uh, since this morning, over the past 3, 6, 12 hours, over the past day, over the past 60 days, past 30 days. Uh, and you can even look at an hourly archive. So if you want to look at precipitation for a specific hour, let's say we are interested in precipitation that fell, oh, let's look at uh, April 29th, um, ending at 21Z, which will be um, 4 p.m. And you'll display that. And you can see uh, that the only precipitation during that time appears to be, at least in our region, down in North Carolina and South Carolina. And you can overlay counties, uh, river basins to see uh, how much rain using this legend on the right fell during that hour. 
And you can also look at daily precipitation accumulation from this link down below. So that is the rainfall tab from the current conditions drop down menu. The next option is air quality and this just uh, takes you to the air now page to show what the air quality forecast is across our area over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. The next drop down menu is satellite. This will allow you to look at satellite data uh, anywhere across uh, North America and the section that will probably be of most interest to you is the eastern United States can select the uh, eastern United States and uh, decide which satellite you want. Maybe you want the, the visible satellite imagery and you can see that uh, for uh, a specific area. Going back to our drop down menu under current conditions, um, there is a map showing observations. I will discuss this later. Uh, this comes under the um, option to look at the weather information display website. And the regional satellite just takes you back to that satellite page, but it automatically goes to that uh, Blacksburg forecast area so you can see the satellite uh, specifically for our area and you get a closer view of the cloud cover in our forecast area. So now let's talk about the third drop-down menu, the radar. You see four options, local, regional, national, and the Charlotte Terminal Doppler weather radar. The local radar uh, just takes you to the uh, National Weather Service Blacksburg radar uh, page where you can loop uh, reflectivity. But I'll be honest, this page um, is a little clunky and it's difficult to zoom in and out. Probably the best radar page from our website to look at uh, to look at uh, either local, regional, or national radar information is from this regional link. So let's click on the regional link, and this takes you to this interface, which has um, background maps, allows you to zoom in and out, allows you to um, overlay roads and cities. So here you see the region outlook. Now let's say you want to look at the local radar just from Blacksburg. Well, select this option where it says select new radar and all the uh, National Weather Service radars will appear and you can just select the uh, Blacksburg radar and it allows you to look at various radar products and you'll probably want to look at the base reflectivity uh, to see where precipitation is falling. And for today, we have uh, no precipitation falling. If you want to go uh, back, to the national radar option, uh, just select the national uh, mosaic, and you can you know scroll around and find some rain up here in uh, central and eastern Pennsylvania, stretching back to New Jersey and uh, New York and into uh, Connecticut. And you can see from this interface, you can look at it on a national scale, on a local scale. Uh, this is easier uh, to navigate than the local page. And the two other options from the radar drop down menu were national and the Charlotte terminal Doppler weather radar which only provides radar information for the Charlotte area uh, that goes up into the Piedmont of North Carolina. Okay let's get to the forecast drop down menu. There's a lot of valuable information that can be found here. The first option from the forecast drop down menu is the forecasters discussion. This is a technical discussion issued multiple times a day from meteorologists working at our office. It's a technical discussion. It will take some time to get used to but you can get an idea of the confidence uh, in the forecast by reading this uh, discussion. Here we talk about which weather models we prefer, the confidence of the forecast, maybe some worst case scenarios. So uh, check that out if you have a chance. That is the forecasters uh, discussion. Going back to the forecast drop down menu, you can look at an hourly view of weather forecast information by selecting the hourly view. And for, for the hourly view, there's a couple ways to do this. You can select it on the map and find a location. So let's say we want to select an area in Pulaski County. We select uh, somewhere in Pulaski County and you will see the hourly forecast showing temperature, humidity, winds, relative humidity, chance for precipitation, sky cover, amount of rain, chances for thunder every hour for the next seven days. And you can look at this in two-day increments by selecting that forward two days. And if you scroll your mouse over these graphics, you, you can see at the bottom the specific information for that hour in time. You can also look at this in a tabular forecast by selecting the tabular option at the bottom that will give you the uh, numbers and values for uh, specific hours. So you can get the hourly forecast from this drop down menu. Uh, perhaps a better way to get the information for a more specific area is to use this map on the front of our website. So again, let's uh, click somewhere in Pulaski County. 
and we will get that forecast for that region. But if we want to zoom in on a specific area in Pulaski, let's say uh, we're in Dublin and we want the forecast for Dublin, we can use this interface to the right, click on Dublin, and notice how the uh, forecast area has shifted to our mouse. Now you can get the hourly forecast for that specific area by clicking on the hourly weather graph here. So that is the hourly weather forecast. From the forecast drop down menu, the next thing we will look at is the um, map view. The map view takes you to the uh, National Digi Digital Forecast Database forecast. And here you get graphical weather forecast that you can select by weather type and location. So it defaults to a regional um, area, but you can zoom in and out and see the forecast for a uh, broader area. And this slider bar allows you to look at the forecast for a specific time. So here we're looking at the, na the uh, uh, maximum temperature forecast for Thursday. Here's the maximum temperature forecast for Friday. Uh, you can look at minimum temperature, chances for precipitation, temperatures, wind chill, heat index, wind speed, cloud cover. And if you don't like these overlays, again, you can zoom in and out using this option over here. Uh, select this arrow to the left and you can um, add specific boundaries such as states, uh, counties, uh, coastal areas, all from this uh, map here. And you can also change the units if you um, want to see the wind speed in miles per hour instead of knots, you just would deselect this option here. So that is the uh, forecast the map view under the forecast drop down menu. Let's move on to the activity planner. The activity planner allows you to plan for specific weather conditions and we find that the Department of Transportation offices like to use this to try and get a heads up on when uh, water may uh, freeze on road surfaces. So for example, let's say you know that you will get some uh, refreezing of water on roads when temperatures are below 32. So you want to know when the temperatures will be from 0 to 32, when the relative humidity is high. So we want to know when the relative humidity will be between 80 and 100 percent. And we know that we know that that refreezing occurs when winds are light. So we also want to know when the winds are less than 5 miles per hour. Uh, for sky cover, we find that most of that refreezing occurs when skies are mostly clear. So let's say we want to look at sky conditions less than 40% and when there's no precipitation. So let's say less than a 10% chance. So you can either use the map here on the left or you can enter your latitude longitude on the right for the specific location. So for this example, let's look at Withville. So for Withville, when will all of these uh, conditions occur at the same time? And you can see uh, when all of these line up together, you will see them shown here. Obviously, here in early May, you will not have temperatures below freezing, but we do have relative humidity values between 80 and 100 percent, light winds uh, and uh, cloud conditions under 20 percent, and precipitation values under 20 percent right in this period here from midnight to 7 a.m. on the morning of uh, Friday, May 8th. So if temperatures were below freezing, this would be an area where all of these would line up and we would notice and we would be perhaps concerned about um, refreezing of water on surfaces. So that is the activity planner. Going back to the forecast drop down menu, you can also get a detailed view of the forecast. And when you select this link, what you will find is a is a three-hour forecast, and the display is, is, is clean and easy to read from that quick forecast. So again, you have this interface where you can either use the map, enter your latitude, longitude, or select some of the larger towns and cities in our forecast area. So in this example, I'm going to click somewhere in Floyd County, and we'll get the quick forecast for Floyd. And you can use this map to refine that area. And you can see you will get the current conditions as well as the forecast in three hour increments, noon, three, six, nine, twelve, and three, for the next seven days as you scroll down here. Another way to look at that forecast in three hour increments. And that is the uh, quick uh, forecast found from the detailed view. Back to the forecast drop down menu, we also have an aviation tab if you want to see aviation forecast. 
fire weather. I know there's a lot of fire weather interest um, in the region. So if you select the fire weather tab, you will be taken to our fire weather forecast page. Note that we briefly went over this on the briefing page from the first drop down menu, but I want to spend some more time on this fire weather page. The fire weather page again shows you the county map where you can access the county weather forecast. Where it might be most beneficial for you um, as a key decision maker or emergency manager, if you need a forecast for a, a wildfire that is taking place or perhaps a hazmat incident, you can submit that through this spot request page. So you select the spot request page and, and select submit a new spot request. You would like a forecast for a specific um, event and region. Give that forecast a name. Is it a hazmat incident? Is it a wildfire? Give us your agency and then fill out the rest of this information including the latitude, lang la latitude, longitude, elevation and what elements you would like to see in the forecast. And when you submit that, we will send you a forecast that will be posted back on our spot weather page within 15 minutes typically. And this spot forecast is only available to national, state and local um, government officials, law enforcement officials, fire weather officials, private entities cannot use this to um, submit a forecast. And you can see in this example we already have a forecast that was submitted for this lower mountain campground in the uh, foothills of North Carolina. So this is the forecast we did this morning and by having the latitudes and longitude we could focus for the specific area and here is the forecast providing an overview as well as two hour forecast for sky condition weather the chances for thunderstorms temperature relative humidity winds transport winds and the chance for a wedding rain so if you need forecast information for a specific thought, uh, sp specific spot use that spot request link from the fire weather page Finally, there is this national fire weather page that can be found from our fire weather forecast page. This is a powerful tool that incorporates several fire weather uh, forecasting tools into one website. And from this site, you get this very nice map that you can zoom into a specific area. So let's say we're interested in uh, the forecast near Bland, Virginia. So we see we have selected Bland, Virginia and notice the forecast comes up. You can access your fire weather zone, the seven day forecast, the hourly weather graph, the digital tab tabular data, all from this link. And if you have an incident in this region and you want to see what the obs weather observations are in this area, you just select this Meso West tab and it will pop up all the Mesonet weather sites within 50 miles of that region and you can scroll over that to see what the winds and temperature doing are, are doing near that area. So that's a, a powerful weather tool that the National Fire Weather page. Um, I would um, suggest that you look at this page on your uh, free time and you can find a wealth of information under the forecast and current conditions uh, sites. Okay, so going back to our website at weather.gov slash Blacksburg we now want to talk about the recreational forecast. The recre recreational forecast was designed by our office to provide a quick link to forecast for some of the uh, state parks and other points of interest in our area. And you can see anywhere where we have a white dot is where we have where we've designated a point of interest. Uh, I will just click on this one, which is Clater Lake State Park, and you just select on that dot, and it will take you to the Clater Lake. Uh, state park forecast for that specific location. And here's the forecast for Clater Lake State Park. So if you plan to uh, go for a visit, you can just use that recreational forecast page to get the forecast quickly. Okay, the last thing I would like to go over on the forecast drop-down menu is the user-defined forecast. Uh, this is a way to look at a forecast for a region. We find that small radio stations that need to make weather forecast uh, for an area as opposed to a point find this very useful. So just to show you how this works, let's say we are interested in the average forecast for a region around the town of let's say Withville. So let's zoom in on our map here to the intersection of Interstate 77 and 81 and let's say we want to know the forecast um, for a listening area 
around with fill. You just take your mouse, select the points, and what this will do is average the forecast for this entire area. Now let's say we do not want to include information above 3,500 feet. That might skew the forecast a little on the cold side where um, there's not a lot of population. So we only want to see the forecast in that region and for areas below, um, let's make it 3,000 feet. So once we've defined our area, you just click the Get Area Forecast. And this does take a little bit of time, but once you select that Get Area Forecast, you will get the forecast for the area you have selected there in red. And there is that forecast for the area you have selected. And it gives you the range in that area of temperatures, probability of precipitation, amount of precipitation. And once again, here is that area. So that is the user-defined area forecast. And that concludes the forecast drop-down menu. So back at our website at weather.gov slash Blacksburg, let's move to the next drop-down menu, which is the rivers and lakes drop-down menu. And this provides some very valuable information when, when you're trying to anticipate uh, the impacts from possible flooding. The first option is the River Observations Map. This will take you to our AHIPS page, which stands for the Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Services page, and you will see the gauges appear on this site. If it is a square site, you have a hydrograph available. If it is a circle, you also have probability forecast with the hydrograph. And let's show you an example of one of those. Let's look at the North Fork of the Holston River near Saltville. So you select uh, on that circle, and you will get a hydrograph showing what the river has done over the past few days and what it is forecast to do over the next five days. As we continue to scroll down, you will notice the flood categories for this site, what major, moderate, and flood stage is, as well as action stage, the historical crest, some recent crest, and new on this page is the FEMA National Flood Hazards layer. When you check that, you will see the 1% annual chance of flood hazard area, also known as the 100-year flood plain. Uh, and you can zoom in and out and look at this at a, as in a broader area. I do want to point your attention to the flood impacts and photo section. Uh, this is information collected over the past several years providing um, specific information on what areas are impacted when the, when the river stage reaches, reaches a specific point. So in this example, when uh, the river stage reaches 13 feet, portions of Route 91 begin to flood. When it reaches 10 feet, we have minor flooding of lowlands along the river. You can also see flooding, or excuse me, photos of the gauge house, uh, the gauge house and other photos from this page. Now, if you are aware of additional impacts from flooding at specific levels, please, please let our hydrologist or let me know and we can incorporate this into the page. So let's take a step back at this map and there are some important tabs that could be helpful to you. The next tab is the river forecast tab. And the river forecast tab shows you um, at a glance if flooding is expected over the next six days. And you can look at this day by day. So for the entire period, we see everything in green, which means no flooding. But if you want to look at this for specific days, this is looking at the um, day two flooding outlook. And no flooding is expected. Then the day three flooding outlook will appear and so forth uh, for the next six days. So that is the first option from the... Uh, tab menu. The next tab is the Experimental Long Range Flood Risk tab. And this gives you an outlook uh, over the next three months. So in this example, we're looking at the potential for flooding for the period May, June, and July. And you can look at this in various percentages. So this is looking at the 50th percentile. Let's look at like a worst case scenario, like the 90th percentile. What this is saying is that there is a 90% chance that the uh, river would exceed, would not exceed flood stage, and only a 10% chance or less that it would exceed flood stage. So you can see that some of the long range outlooks are painting some potential for uh, above normal rainfall down here in the Virginia South side, suggesting that there's a small chance for some flooding maybe along the Dan and lower Roanoke rivers in that area. So that is the experimental long range flood risk. You can also find precipitation, and we've talked about this map before in the current conditions map, but this also takes you uh, to the Ahab's precipitation analysis showing how much precipitation has fallen uh, over the past day, seven days, 
14 days, 30 days, or 60 days. And again, you can overlay counties. You can look at this by regions, by state, and you can even look at precipitation uh, for various months and years and days from this precipitation map. And again, this is a graphical representation of precipitation using uh, gauges and radar information. Now let's go back to the river and lakes drop down menu. The second tab, the river forecast map, we've gone over already. That was in one of the tabs. River forecast centers just takes you to the river forecast centers that cover our area. There is a text forecast of uh, river forecast that you can select and see in a text version uh, various um, sites and the flood stage, the latest stage that was uh, measured, uh, the change over the past 24 hours, and what those stages will be in the next three days. And that is in a text um, presentation. Let's talk about the Ensemble River Guidance page. Uh, this is an interesting site that allows you to anticipate potential flooding over the next several days looking at model data. So you can see from this default that we can uh, see at a glance where the uh, models are suggesting there is a 30% chance or greater of rivers reaching action stage. And you can see there's nothing forecast in Virginia, but let's take a closer look. So let's zoom in to Virginia. So from this drop down menu, we would select Virginia. And you can see from this model, all of the gauge sites will appear and they all will show up uh, as green in our area, indicating that there is uh, no chance, or at least less than a 30% chance, that any of the rivers are expected to reach action stage over the next seven days. So if you want to look at this even closer, select one of these points. So let's look at Galax. So if we look at Galax, uh, from this model, this is a GEFS model that's run several times, you can see through May 13th, that is seven days from now, so for the next week, uh, there's not much chance at all that we're going to go above action stage. And through the next week, models are suggesting the best forecast for the amount of precipitation to fall is going to be around an inch, uh, but there is a 5% chance that it's going to be a half an inch or less, and a 5% chance that it's going to be more than two inches of rain that falls over the next week. You can also look at the flow uh, probabilities over the next week the precipitation expected values day by day over the next week, temperature forecast over the next week, snow water equivalent over the next week, and you can even look at the individual model runs. So this is looking at the individual model runs of the accumulated precipitation over the next week. You can see that most of the runs are clustering around one to uh, one and a half inches. So this is where our confidence would be highest in terms of the precipitation forecast. You can see just a couple outliers for a half an inch and two inches. So our confidence is low that we would see that little or that much precipitation. Um, you can also see those day by day and temperature forecast day by day uh, from that site. So again, that is the uh, meteorological model ensemble river forecast that you can get a, a, a general idea of the potential for flooding over the next week. So that is the rivers and lakes drop down menu. Let's now move to the climate and past weather drop down menu and let's select the past observed weather. There is again a wealth of climate information that can be obtained from this link. We have six climate sites at the National Weather Service in Blacksburg. They are Blacksburg, Roanoke, Lynchburg, Danville, Bluefield, and Lewisburg. You can look at temperature information for the past day, for the past month, or the past five years by month by selecting the archived data. But if you don't live in one of these six climate locations or you want weather information for areas outside of these six climate sites, there is a way to access that that I will show you a little bit later. You can also look at these climate locations graphically by selecting the Climate Locations tab. The Climate Prediction tab allows you to look at long-range climate forecasts, the three-month outlook, the six to 10-day or the eight to 14-day outlook, monthly and seasonal outlooks, as well as the El Nino and La Nina outlooks found from the 
uh, Climate Prediction Center's pages. There are climate resources available from the Climate Resource tab from the National Climatic Data Center, and I'll allow you to explore those later. Local, local data and records. This will show the top 10 temperatures, rainfall, and snowfall by month for those six climate sites that I showed you earlier, as well as links to regional and national climate offices, some local climate studies, and climate graphs for those climate sites. If you're interested in sunset uh, information and sunrise information, select the astronomical tab. And I want to spend some time on this now data tab. This now data tab allows you to view past weather information for sites that are not climate sites. These are our co-op sites or cooperative weather observer sites that collect weather information and some of these locations have been collecting weather information for years. And I like to look at this from a map. So select the view map option and anywhere you see a pin uh, you will find one of our co-op sites. So let's look at uh, this pin which is going to be one south of Withville. So if you are interested in let's say temperature information for a specific time for in Withville or for the site near Withville, you can select daily data for a month and then use this calendar and let's say we want to look at data in the year 2000. Select done and then go and you will get the maximum minimum average temperature as precipitation and snow uh, for April of 2000 day by day. The blue colors means there was a record low for April 1st, 2000 in Withville. The red colors indicates there was a record high for this site uh, in Withville. So again, if you're trying to acquire climate information for areas outside of those six climate sites, please look at that first drop-down menu from our um, climate and past weather uh, drop-down menu, which can be found here. You can also see drought outlook information from the drought outlook uh, tab, climate prediction information, which we already talked about uh, from the uh, tab in the earlier section. The historical records was also found in one of those tabs we talked about earlier. The 24-hour summary, uh, if we look at this tab, this allows you to look at a text of 24-hour precipitation and temperatures for co-op sites in our area. Going back to the climate and past weather information, COCORAS, that is the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. We are asking volunteers to collect snowfall, rainfall reports uh, as they can from using rain gauges they've ordered from this COCORAS website. And you can just select on Virginia to see data from these locations. And let's zoom into uh, Virginia. And you can look at a specific date, a specific county, on how much precipitation has fallen. You can also look at this from the view data options, daily precipitation reports. So you can search um, precipitation by state, by county, and by date. So if you want to know how much snow fell um, at a Cocoa Ross site or what the um, amount of rain fell at a Cocoa Ross site, use this interface to select that site and location and you can query that by just clicking on uh, this tab which will show you the precipitation from highest amounts to lowest amounts. That is the Cocoraz link. Finally under the drop down menus we have past rainfall and this takes you back to the map we already showed you from the AHIBS page showing how much rain has fallen over the past period of time. The last drop down menu is our local programs menu. Quickly going through this, we have the Blacksburg Skywarm page. If you want to see what spotter classes are occurring in the region, you will see those listed here. You will also find a link to take Skywarm training online uh, from the Blacksburg Skywarm drop down menu tab. Kokoraz is again found here. Educational resources. If you're interested in looking at forecast maps and weather models, you can find that from the uh, forecast maps and models link. Local research will be posted on the local research link. Twice a year, our office publishes a newsletter that can be found here. If you're interested in some past events, you will find that information from the past event tab. If somebody you know would like to tour our facility, 
fill out the tour request form found here. Questions about your weather radio can hopefully be answered from the weather radio tab from this drop down menu. Now you will see several icons found below these drop down menus. Most of these are just repeated from the uh, links above the seven drop down menus. There are a couple that were not linked to those drop down menus. The first is the weather information display. This is the enhanced data display that is a powerful situational awareness tool that I could spend an hour talking about. I will provide a link where you can watch a YouTube video that goes into details for all of these overlays, but radar, satellite, watches and warnings, tropical information, river information, forecast information, weather observation information, upper air data, model forecast, all can be overlaid, shared, linked from the enhanced data display. So this is the enhanced data display. Again, I would encourage you to look at this at your leisure. A couple of other links that we did not discuss in the drop down menus include the text products. If there is a specific text product you are interested in viewing, select the text products tab and you will see all of our products listed from this option. Probably the one that many people are looking for is the public information statement. This public information statement is used to provide precipitation totals, snowfall totals. If there's an outage to a weather radio site, we'll send a notice through this public information uh, statement. Um, all other text products can be found from that text product icon. Submit a storm report. If you would like to submit a report of hail, wind damage, flooding, or snow, you can select the Submit Storm Report icon, and you will be taken to this form where you can select the time and date, location, and what you saw, and any comments, and we will be emailed with your storm report. And the last icon found at the bottom that is not found from the drop-down menu is our social media dashboard. If you want to see the latest information we've posted on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, you can find all of those from the social media dashboard. Now at the very bottom of the www.weather.gov website are several links that just repeat what we've talked about above or go to regional or national centers found at the very top. You can also register for weather alerts through email or text from various companies by selecting this email and SMS weather alert page at the very bottom and it gives you a list of several companies that offer these alerts. So if you know somebody that is interested in uh, receiving weather alerts you can direct them to that link. That is a broad overview of the National Weather Service Blacksburg website. Again, that site is www.weather.gov slash Blacksburg. And I hope this at least will entice you to go to that site and navigate through this yourself and see if there are products and uh, images that can be useful to you. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to email us. The office email address is rnk.skywarn at noaa.gov. You can call our office at 540-552-0084. Thank you very much for your time and for your patience, and I hope you find weather.gov slash Blacksburg useful for your needs.